Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw a horse in pastels and we're going to be focusing on how to build up the layers when drawing realistic fur. Now before I get into that, the first thing that I do is work on the eye. This is where that main emotion and expression stems from so I do like to make sure that I've got this accurate and completed before I move on to anything else. Now the main consideration when working on eyes to start with is that we're really building up the shading. So most of the time there's going to be a shadow at the top of the eye, you can see here that I'm working on that now, and then that helps to build up that sphere shape. The shadows and highlights on an eye are really important. If they're in the wrong place, they're gonna really affect the shape of that eye. So it's very important to make sure that we're paying very close attention to that reference photo. So once I was happy with the eye, that's when I move on to blocking in the base layers and the hair and fur around it. Now you can see here that I'm being very careful again where I'm placing my highlights and my shadows. Now the highlights and shadows of any subject, regardless of the animal that you're painting, are never random. They are following the underlying bone and muscular structure. Now with horses, given that their hair is very fine and short, this enables a lot more of that underlying structure to be visible. This is going to be apparent through very tiny little ridges, bumps, any dips in the skin. So it's really important that the lights and darks are placed accurately at that base layer stage. And you can see here that where I'm blocking this in with my pan pastels, I am really hinting at that light source. Now when it comes to the base layer, regardless of the method that you're using to put your pastel down, so as I said I'm using pan pastels for that very first layer, you could use pastel sticks or just your pastel pencils. But the main consideration at that stage is you don't want to be filling the tooth of the paper. If you then come to put your details on top with your pastel pencils and you feel like those pencils are just gliding over the top and no pastel is leaving that pencil, you're not able to draw individual pencil strokes, then that does mean you filled the tooth of the paper. So one thing you can see here is my white transfer lines are showing through that pan pastel layer. That is a really good indication and a way of judging that you've got just about the right amount of pastel on that layer for that very first base. Then you can build up as many layers as you want from then on. Now as I go through this portrait here, you can see that I'm using a lot of layers and I still haven't finished that section around the eye. I've got lots more details to add. And despite that, even when this portrait was finished, I would still have plenty of tooth of the paper left to add future layers. So the layering process and how we're applying the pastel here are really, really important. Now because of that, this is something that I talk about in my real-time in-depth tutorials on Patreon, so if they're of interest I will link my Patreon in the description below. And I do have a range of horse tutorials available there and it really does focus on the pet portrait side of things as well as the wildlife subjects. So I like to have many dogs, cats and horses available for tutorials of different breeds, colours and fur textures so that any Patreon members who would like to take on commissions of their own have a wide variety of animals that they can transfer the tips and techniques that I share, those layering processes and all of the pencils and materials that I'm using into their own work. So as I've said, if that's of interest, um, I will link my Patreon in the description below. If you've got any questions, then feel free to pop them in the comments too. So back to the portrait here where I'm working on the ears. Notice how I'm adding these tiny little hairs over the background. That there is enabling this portrait to look three dimensional because it doesn't look like a sticker that's just been stuck on that paper. Those tiny little hairs that overlap that background make a real difference. Now of course you may have areas like on the back surface of that ear, on the left hand side, some of those hairs are not meant to be overlapping on the background at all, given the way that that hair direction is travelling. So you don't want to be adding random details where they're not needed, but it's very important to add the ones that you can see that do overlap that very edge. Now in terms of the forelock here, I like to hold my pencils at the end of that barrel. You can see here that every single pencil I hold, I'm not right up close to the lead. This is a really good technique on using a pencil to create fine but long lines. The closer you hold that pencil to the lead, the shorter your pencil strokes are going to be because you don't have enough leverage on that pencil. 
You're also more likely to apply more pressure to that pencil when you're holding it closer to the lead, just because again, you are holding it, you're forcing your fingers down on a closer section of that pencil, closer to the paper, and without even realizing, you're forcing more pressure through your hand down that pencil. So if you want to create fine, long lines, holding that pencil further away from the lead is the best way of achieving those types of details. So for the main, this is very similar to the forelock and how I approach it. You want to work with individual layers and you want to be focusing with the hair that's closest to the skin first and building up from there. So you'll notice that I'm not jumping to my brightest values first. I'm going to be saving those for my future layers. I want to be working from dark to light. But as you can see during times here, I do go back in and add my shadows. So there's going to be times where I'm working from dark to light, but then I'm also working from light to dark. It's going to depend on that type of texture, the reference photo, the lighting. There are many different things that are influenced by that. But the, the one thing with pastels is it's a very forgiving medium. It's very versatile. You don't have to work with one specific layering technique. And as I say here, like with this video, and I've got many others on YouTube, I do work with a mixture of dark to light and light to dark depending on the scenario. Now I do have other horse tutorials where I would be showing those variations in technique so I will link those in the description below if they're of interest too. So before we move on to the rest of the face, if the tips and techniques that I've shared so far in this video have been useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. YouTube share it with so many more people. I'd be really, really grateful. So the one thing that I mention all of the time in every single video on YouTube and I cover it thoroughly in my real-time tutorials on Patreon is the importance of three main elements when working with your pencils. That's the fur direction, the fur length, and the fur thickness. Now, the way that we're using the pencils are going to influence all of those things. The length of the lead, the pressure on the pencil, where we're holding that pencil. Everything here comes into play. And depending on the type of hair or fur texture that I need to draw, those three things are going to be adjusted accordingly. Now, when you're working on an animal like a horse, as I've said earlier, they've got those structures underneath the skin that cause those ridges, the lights and the darks to shift. So I do want to make sure that I've got that accurate. But the other thing that does influence that as well is the fur direction. Now, you can see here that where I'm curving my pencil strokes is already indicating at this main cheekbone on the side of the horse's face. If I weren't guiding my pencil over down towards the left side of that paper, it wouldn't look like it's curving over that cheekbone. It would look very two-dimensional and flat. So the hair or fur direction is so important. So once I'm confident and I know where I should be moving that pencil in terms of the direction, I then need to focus on the length of those pencil strokes. The length of the pencil strokes are just as important. If I make them too long, I'm going to make the horse look far too hairy and a bit more of a thicker coat, which of course it wouldn't be right. The only time that that might be needed is in winter when horses develop a bit more of a longer, thicker coat, then you would obviously then have to adjust your pencil strokes. But making a pencil stroke too long or again too short is going to massively affect the texture and therefore how much our portrait resembles that animal as it should. So those th- three things here are so important. And that brings me on to the third point, which is the fur thickness. Now this really is decided based on the length of the, your lead, how sharp that point is, and the pressure that you're applying to the pencil. Those three things do need to be decided before we start drawing with that pencil, because they will affect how thick, how fine those lines should be. Now, most of the time, if you look at these pencils here, even though it's sped up, you can see that I'm not working with really sharp pencils, yet the lines and the details I'm creating here are very, very fine. Sometimes they're barely noticeable. And again, that brings me on to the importance of subtle layers. Look here how I'm not jumping to my brightest values early on. I'm making sure to build up my layers as I go. If I jump into my highlights too soon, I will make this look very flat and two-dimensional. The more layers that I'm adding here, the more depth that I'm creating. Now, what is important with that is I don't want to overdo it and add too many layers because I don't then want to get the wrong sort of fur texture. 
Now it's very rare to have too many layers, but it is something to be aware of if you start getting a bit tired or you feel like you're overworking an area, I'd always recommend to take a step back from your drawing, put it away for a day or two, and then get back to it with fresh eyes. Because it can be very tempting to subconsciously start speeding that process up and we skip out on these important subtle layers. And then ultimately, as I say, the portrait does just look a little bit flatter. So whenever I feel myself getting to that point where maybe I've been working on it for too many days, you know, four or five days at the most, I will then usually put that away for a day, work on something else and then finish it off. So the importance of these three things, direction, length and thickness, are definitely easier to be observed in those slower real-time tutorials on Patreon. So if you would like to see that in a range of those animals, because it can be applied to any fur texture, then as I've said, my Patreon is linked in the description below. I do also have a Patreon library on my website, which lists all of the tutorials that are available on all of the tiers. So you can get an idea of what sort of content I've got there before you sign up. Now, the wonderful thing with Patreon is you can stay for as long as you want or you can cancel at any time. It's really, really flexible. Now, if you've seen many of my other videos here on YouTube, you'll know that I do like to work in small sections. This is another way that I personally keep myself motivated throughout a piece. If I work with one solid layer, two things I find can happen. One, we have a tendency to rush through those layers because we're blocking everything in at the same time. And two, we end up staying at a bit more of that ugly stage for a little bit longer than we would when we get the area more completed as I have here. Now, if I decided to stop drawing at this point, I could easily pick up the pencils the following day because the top section of that horse already looks like that photograph. That in itself is enough to keep us motivated and push through the rest of the portrait. But if I had all of this blocked in that base layer stage, which isn't the nicest stage to look at, it can become very disheartening. So if you do find yourself feeling that way, then working in smaller sections may work for you as well. Now here, the fur direction is really starting to become apparent with how important it is. Look at how it's really curving over and it's helping to create that three-dimensional feel, all because I've got my contrast good, I've got my darks dark enough and my highlights bright enough, and then I've also really focused on those three things, the fur direction, fur length and fur thickness. Now this again is going to become more obvious when we start mapping in the bridge of the nose here because where that hair comes away from the top surface of the nose where that white marking is, it has to slope down towards that cheekbone, down by the muzzle and if we don't get that right it's going to make the face potentially look really wide or too narrow. So the way that we are creating those pencil strokes is going to really affect the shape of the face here. So I did just quickly there mention the importance of contrast. Now I speak about this in all of my tutorials because I do focus on that more than the exact colour. Now of course colour is important and in my Patreon tutorials I do show you how I select my colours, how I mix my layers to achieve a specific colour, but it isn't as important as the contrast. And the reason being, you could have five photographs of that one animal and that colour of that animal is going to be different in every single photograph. The lighting, whether or not a flash was used, was that taken indoors, was it outside, natural light and so on. There are so many things that affect the colour. But the contrast is what makes that three dimensional. It's why graphite portraits or any black and white medium is still realistic. There's no colour used but your values are right. The darks are dark and your highlights are bright. So because of that, I always do put a lot of emphasis on it during every single tutorial, just because I feel that that makes more difference in my artwork. Now, one question that I would just like to quickly answer, because it's, it's something that does get asked very frequently, and is it, do I use a fixative when my portraits are finished? Now, I personally don't use a fixative, just because they can adjust the colour and those tonal values, so your contrast can be affected. And because I've spent so many hours, many days on individual portraits, I don't want that to be affected. That's one thing that I've been focusing on throughout that portrait. I just prefer to mount that, put a mat on it and then get my clients or if it's a piece that I'm doing for myself, I will frame that and then once it's behind glass, it is protected. 
Now the paper that you use is important. I use Pastel Matte by Claire Fontaine and that is designed where it grips that pastel. It's designed, it says that it doesn't have to be used with fixatives. So I've never had any experience with pastel dropping off of that paper. It just hasn't happened from my experience. So because of that, and the things that can happen when you do apply a fixative, I just prefer not to use them. I have used a fixative once and it ruined my artwork and I said that I would never do it again. So as long as it's behind glass, it's safe, it's protected, it is not going to get damaged. So when it comes to the nose and the muzzle area of horses, I do like to make sure that I've got my base layers well blended and nice and smooth. I feel that it's easier for me to then get those finer hairs in place because one of the things that I must make sure of here is that my pencil strokes are shorter. You're going to have much shorter hair around that nose than anywhere else on that horse's face. So I do want to make sure that I've captured that. So the last element on this portrait was the neck and all of the tips and techniques that I've mentioned here are exactly the same. So I'm working on my good base layer, I'm making sure that I've got my lights and my darks and then of course the pencil technique following that hair direction. So I really do hope the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video have been useful. As I said earlier, if they were, I would really appreciate it if you could give the video a like and a thumbs up. And if you are interested in my in-depth tutorials on Patreon, then that is linked in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. And if you've got any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments because I'm more than happy to help if I can. And I'm gonna be uploading another video to YouTube very soon in the next few days. This is a photograph of the finished portrait. You can now see the importance of those lights and darks, the way that that fur direction is curving over in those highlights and shadows. This is what's built up that realism. I could have done this in black and white and it still would have looked three dimensional. The color is important, it is, but we just wanna focus on that contrast just as much. And I can't wait to share what I've been working on in January. Some beautiful portraits showing a range of techniques. So that's coming up very, very soon.